because this is my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can pull this off. I got enough strength. But I needed a little more strength. Yeah. I needed to know, you know what I'm saying, that uh, I didn't have a sex and that was uncurable. So, so I, you know, I thought it might just been, you know, eased up all my day is gonna come out. Well, Saturday night, I went to bed early. And I Bertie woke up. And I was sweating. You know what I'm saying? I thought Bertie had those water in them. I was like, when I woke up, you know. Uh, and so I woke up, man, I was wet. Uh -huh. So grabbed myself already, went back to sleep, woke up a little while later, I was wet again. And I remember, I remember what the Holy Spirit had told me earlier. The Holy Spirit said, don't wear your do rag you know, to bed tonight. I thought you could wear my do rag. <laughs> don't wear your do rag to bed tonight. <laughs> Talk to the Lord in the Spirit. It's okay, so I took my do rag off and so, And all that took place. And I remember what my pastor said. My pastor said, You got this. There's something leaked up inside me. Uh -huh. I'm telling y'all, when you trust the man of God, you're a father. You know what I'm saying? His words can carry power. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because he spoke those words, you know what I'm saying? I, I believe the Lord, you know what I'm saying? So, well, I believe he got it now. And he, re 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 he released me. So now! All right now! Church on a steady basis and really get into the Word of God, you won't be able to help them. Amen. 
And as we go through this message, you'll find out how dangerous it is, you know what I'm saying, to lead somebody to pain in the balance. All right. Come on. This is a surprising chapter. In verse 9, we see a woman surprised that Jesus walked to her. And more people ought to be surprised today. But unfortunately, they are not surprised that Jesus knew all about it. But they are uh, that Jesus knew all about her, knew all about her. One of the most amazing things is that God knows us, everything about us. Amen. Amen. Nothing here, nothing you can hide from God. He knows Amen. what you did last night, a few moments ago. Did it, did but he still loves us. The disciples, yeah, yeah. the disciples were surprised that Jesus was not hungry. His mind was not hungry with physical needs. If you want to drown out your own problems, just begin to minister to others. When we focus when we focus upon the ministries of God, we will forget our own physical needs. Jesus said to Satan when tempted, man does not live by bread alone. The city of Sakaar surprised by the chained woman when God's grace reached into the, the, the privacy of a saved person, the community will notice. Uh -huh. If we want people to notice our church, we have to produce life altering <coughs> results. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the lives of people to notice our church. We have to produce life. We have to produce life. I didn't say that. We have to produce life altering results in the lives of our community. Uh -huh. yeah. Life altering results in our community. In, in our community. Maybe not in the neighborhood in which you live, totally, but you have a community that you travel in mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Whether yeah. you hang out over here or you hang out over there, that's your community. Yeah. And the reality of it is, in the midst of that community, you know what I'm saying, you don't allow the influence that's in the community to overpower your godliness. Say that. Say that. Say that. Say that. So how do we make that impact? By telling them about Jesus. Amen. Yes. You got to tell them about Jesus. Now, if some of them don't want to hear it, who cares? We have to tell the story. In reality, we, we care whether they want to hear it or not, but we don't really, you know what I'm saying, we can't really care, you know what I'm saying, if they want us to say it or not, because we have to say it. We have to tell the story, you know what I'm saying, regardless if it seems like it's falling on deaf ears or not, but one thing about the word of God, you know what I'm saying, it will fall fresh on somebody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, somebody else will come, you know what I'm saying, and bring it up to me. So one of the most important things in our lives is the harvesting of souls. Unfortunately, Amen. Amen. not many are being warned today in America. We are experiencing a crowd in this country, a crowd of spiritual things. Uh -huh. There are less prayer in America than ever before. Less Bible study even among Christians. Less church attendance. Now bear with me. Go ahead. There is more apathy, which is the lack of concern for others in the church today than there is in the business world. Mm -hmm. As a result, there is no power in the church. There is, there is in the church no, no power like before. Uh -huh. Lives are not being altered because there are, they are not being respected by the saints. Amen. The altar, the altar, the altar is not being respected by the saints. We bring stuff up to the altar, and then we take it back. Amen. Got to leave it at the altar. Amen. The altar is very, very important because if you're going to help them, how I know? I had to leave stuff at the altar. You know what I'm saying? It was like he always getting up. Somebody said, "Yes," but the reality of it is they don't know. You know what I'm saying? I had a track record long and most of them. Yeah, the reality of it is I had to get up more. So the reality of it is that. I was leaving stuff at the altar. You know what I'm saying? The reality of it is, you're going to get rid of all of it, but if you keep taking all of it back, you'll never get rid of any of it. Amen. The church, the saints are not, they're just not leaving the problem there. Which brings us to this question 
If the harvest of souls is so important to Christ, should it be? Amen. Just as important to the church. Amen. Should it not be our main focus? And this morning, just for a short while, let's talk about why the harvest can't wait. My first one goes like this. The harvest is ready. Now. Not tomorrow. They can't wait. Now. Amen. Now Back up a little bit because some of you are not familiar really with farming. When the harvest get ready, and if you don't get it out at a certain time, some rain might come in, you won't right. be able to get it out, you know what I'm saying, at that time, but you gotta wait till it dry right up where well, it rots in the field. Amen. So the reality of it is that the harvest time is now. The souls can't wait. There are a confusion about the time of harvest. Jesus said, the harvest is now. Not when we think it should be. How many times have we been fitting to, going to, uh, as soon as we learn a little bit more? Mm. Well, I've been guilty. Uh, next year, uh, as soon as we take that class, mm. all of the good intentions in the world it doesn't cut it. Jesus says the harvest time is now. Uh -huh. The second Corinthians 6 and 2. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the days of salvation I have heard thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. We have to rearrange our priorities and to be in line with God. Amen. We too have to realize there is no time like the present for witnessing. We have to pray for the opportunity to then act when it arrives. Uh, getting motivated for the harvest, Jesus says, lift up your eyes, see the lost world around you. If someone says they don't see anyone, they haven't lifted their eyes. Just like Jesus, they, the fields are white yeah. under harvest all around us. Yeah, yeah. But we have to be watching, looking constantly for the opportunity to tell someone about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And what he does done for us. We need to focus our eyes upon spiritual matters. If we are always focused upon the world, our eyes will uh, be diverted down. Our focus becomes more upon the problem of the world and less on spiritual matters. Uh, when we are focused upon the world, our spirit suffers. So who is to reap the harvest? We all are young old. New babies in Christ to mature Christian, pastor to the world. All of us are to be witnesses for him. Yeah. Uh, senior saints, don't think that uh, your time has passed. You can be effective. You can be an effective witness too. Yeah. Uh, Luke talks about it. Luke yeah. talks about it in the second chapter in the 36th verse. It says, and there was one Anna, a prophetess, uh, the daughter of Penangu, uh, of the tribe of Asher. She was a great age and had lived with the husband seven years uh, from her virginity. Verse 37 says, and she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting, prayer, prayer night and day. Then 38 says, and coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all of them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. A minimum of 84 years old and still witnesses. What a testimony. Yeah. Truly, yeah. the time for harvest is now. Mm -hmm. While the fields are white, unto harvest people everywhere are troubled. I know our country is in trouble, but have you yeah. ever thought that God could use this to draw people to him, historically speaking. Uh, when people had no one else to turn, they have turned in desperation to the church. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's not just the economy that, the, that got the people trouble, it's the trouble marriages, the alcohol, the drugs, the hatred. And at, at an all-time high, you don't have to look very far well, to find people who are troubled. But you do have to look up out of your own trouble to yeah, help yeah. deal with their with their. Yeah. Why is it important to find those who are troubled? Because they are the ones who are seeking answers. They are the ones who will listen 
Let me tell you something that will encourage you to witness. There are people out there who are seeking answers. We have our country of the drift in a sea of immorality and lost in the wilderness of religion. The, the truth needs to be shouted from the rooftop. Will you help me? Never depend on someone else to help the person you can help. I win a soul, you can win, Christ. Amen, John. Amen. A soul that you could win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for somebody else to come along. Your assignment. Go ahead. Tell the story. Yeah, Trust God. Yeah. Isaiah 6 and 8 said, Although I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for me? And then I said, You are my Lord, send me. Amen. That brings me to my second point. Don't be getting out of here soon. Yeah. <laughs> there are reapers needed for the harm. Amen. 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 There are reapers needed for the harm. You look around. If you think about it. But it really may not, it really may not dwell in the heart. Before I before you can understand the second point, I have to make sure you understand that. You have to know that if you drop the ball, you're living off of probably your your parents, their parents, their parents' parents, you know what I'm saying? Bless it. Amen. If you don't serve God in your time in which He gives you, you know what I'm saying, then you drop the ball. Yeah. Then your generation, you know what I'm saying, your, your, your kids make it, your grandkids may not make it. Your grandkids are dealing with a time so hard. You know what I'm saying? They're dealing with things so hard. Because in the midst of all this trouble, God can keep them, you know what I'm saying, from a bunch of mess. I know yeah. I walked through mess all my life, bullets. You know what I'm saying? And people want to take, you know what I'm saying? I went to places where other folks didn't go. You know what I'm saying? But the reality of the deal is that. He's a keeper. But the reality of it is that it's about serving the Lord. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So, so, so if, if you drop the ball, if you said church ain't all that, the reality of it is this is a journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, you accept it and you walk it out. And the more you walk in, the more you walk in, the more love they become. Yeah. Because uh -huh. you stop looking at you and you start looking at us. Yeah. You want people to see the God that you serve. You want people to know the power yes, of the God you serve. Yes, and then, 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 then it becomes, you know what I'm saying, something that you really want to be in heart. Yeah. I couldn't see. But, you know what I'm saying, I positioned myself in the choir. Because I believe that God, you know what I'm saying, had a place for me in his service. Amen. And you got to believe that in your mind. Uh -huh. If you don't believe it in your mind, <coughs> I can talk all I want to. Mm. But I hope that if I don't reach it, somebody else will reach yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, amen. 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 It says, in the seventh point, there is joy in working for the heart. There is no joy in most people's lives today. People are trying to buy happiness and joy in the department store. Man, how? And this cannot be found. David knew where his joy was. It was in his salvation. Real joy in life comes only from the peace that God gives. When we realize that we are his children, there is a joy that comes in knowing that you are pleasing the Father. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, can't, you can't buy that feeling at Walmart. Amen. 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 Not at Walmart. Not at Walmart. <laughs> but there he is. There is no greater joy, I promise you. There is no greater joy, no greater joy in the world than uh, leading someone to Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. You are literally giving someone a gift of eternal life. Thank you, sis, for wanting your baby to have eternal life. Share it with them, your baby, the gift of eternal life. Share with them the gift uh, that will <coughs> last and eternal yeah. and Man. change their lives forever. Amen. How often do you get to do that for someone? So why do we fail to share? Why don't we tell everyone we know? 
perhaps because Satan has got so many of us convinced that no one will listen. Mm. No one will listen. Most Christians do not expect their harvest today. Many are just holding on, trying to keep their head above water until Jesus comes back. <laughs> there is little soul winning, field witnessing, less are uh, attending Bible study and very little are uh, praying. <laughs> Most think that this is all there is to life. No, no, no. There is, there is, a, there is a dynamics in uh, uh, existing, exciting life. There is a dynamic and exciting life awaiting. But if you don't, if you don't see this, <coughs> I'm saying it again, I'm going to keep saying it. I can't make you see. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You gotta see it how important. Maybe if you thought about it like this, if all your family members, you know what I'm saying, dies off and you be left alone. Mm -hmm. How long would you be? Mm -hmm. You gotta consider the things that are taking place and going on around. That you really dig deep into this world. And the only way that, you know what I'm saying, that would happen is that they all become saved. Yeah. Yeah. All say, you know they say. Then you look at this very different. But Amen. you always think about how I feel, how I see it. You know what I'm saying? I myself. Come on. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know it. I, I gotta say this. Because <laughs> sensitive, I would be a self. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't give you a cookie. <laughs> you know what I'm just saying, you know. I would I wouldn't give you a cookie. You know what I'm saying? They gave me cookies. I kept all of them cookies. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? And the man who gave me, the woman who gave it to me, couldn't get a cookie for me. That's how, you know what I'm saying? That's selfish. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you. See, and see, that's how some people are today. You know what I'm saying? Amen. We're so selfish about the things of God. Yeah, the word of God. You know what I'm saying? And we want to keep it to ourselves. And the reality of it, the word of God is not so. What would happen is, if you don't share the word of God, you know what I'm saying? The word of God has has what it called just like just like if you leave a car or anything sitting out on the ground. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it will rust and rot. If you leave it sitting in the one spot. Well then if you don't use the word of God, you know what I'm saying? The word of God has the way, you know what I'm saying, of uh, 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 destroying you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You'll be wondering why things not working right. Well, because amen. you fail to do what you learn. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You know what I'm saying? For, for your life and for the people around you. Amen. You got to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't want to preach this today. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, you know what I'm saying? Coming out of the storm. You know what I'm saying? You, you, know, you, you don't want to preach a message like this. I want to preach a message. You know what I'm saying? With, 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 with a little more. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know what I'm saying? But this is a message where, you know what I'm saying, where it, 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 it kind of slap people on the cheek. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Why is he been here today? Why did I come to church? If you find yourself in church today, to God, God is saying something to you. I, right. I mean, I'm just telling you. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 I, I passed by my cousin out there and they waved him. I went by again and they waved. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know that they was coming to church. It was God called me. God just said, I ain't God. I ain't God. I'm just saying, now, the God we serve is an awesome God. Yes, yes. I'm just telling you. Yes. 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 So, yes. so we have to make sure. We have to make sure that we don't be on the sideline. Right? Because of this dynamic and exciting life is waiting for us to grab a hold of it. Therefore, those who will follow God's margin, the problem is not the message. The problem is not the delivery of the message. It is the message. We are expecting milk babies to do the work of full grown Christian souls. Mm -hmm. Not what Jesus said, the labor of few folk. Yes, it's yes. time to realize that the truth, the truth of the matter, we may be the only thing standing between our friends, neighbors, loved ones, and eternity. Hell is not a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. Right? You gotta realize it. hell is not a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. But it's a horrible place. Amen. Uh, we, by our side, sentencing them to their doom. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be willing to send them there if we never tell them about Jesus. 
and, and their needs of salvation. And we yes. might as well be casting them ourselves. We need to think that no one else will tell them. Uh, this is a little story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, nobody. Y'all heard it. All right, tell me. Tell me. Tell And we thought this would be befitting, but this message, because it still does, and it still has to go forward. It yeah. still has to shout right, and shout it. And there was an important job to be done. <clears throat> everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did. Right, somebody yeah. got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody would do it. Uh, it ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody knew that anybody could have done it. It's a human story. That's it. That hit a little too close to home. Uh, what are you doing in God's great harvest? Are uh, you getting in on the good stuff? Uh, this is the good stuff of life. <laughs> yes, Lord. It, it's what makes this life worth it. I'm yeah, going yeah, yeah. to tell you, I did a bunch of stuff, but I love this hey. story. And I did a thing about this stuff. Are you making a difference? If not, then change something. You've got to change something. The great definition of insanity is keep doing the same thing. The way, the same way, expecting a different result. Not going to happen. Yes, I know. I will, it will require you to get out of your comfort zone. That's what we want. We have made too many comfort zones. I find myself in comfort zone. I have to stop. The Lord won't let me make comfort zone anymore. Sometimes I got to get in a place where I was comfortable. You know what I'm saying? The Lord start throwing coals up in there. Y'all don't understand. You know what I'm saying? So I don't look for comfort zones. Uh, comfort zones anymore. I find myself, you know what I'm saying, challenging the beast head on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, butting heads with it because the reality of it is that I know what God wants me to do. And he yeah. wants me, you know what I'm saying, to stand where I'm yeah. placing me, you know what I'm saying, in the beast, you know what I'm saying, who he called me to be. And then in the midst of a dark situation, you know what I'm saying, I have to be that light. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you'll have to learn to walk, yes. talk to strangers. Yes. Come on. But here's the Second definition of insanity, knowing there is something better, but just out of the reach and not getting the stool so you can reach it. The good stuff in life is usually on the second shelf. It requires effort. Come on. Yeah. Let me say that again. It requires effort to get it. Yes, but it is worth every bit of effort. It requires how how do you how do we know that? Glad you asked. That's my third point. Now these are, <laughs> there are rewards promised to the reapers in hearts. Amen. There are very few guarantees in this life. There are, however, many promises. There are as many guarantees, get rich quick schemes out there uh, as there is reality show. Uh, but people are always looking for a shortcut to a good life. And yet they are looking in the wrong places. One, one thing is guaranteed, you will never find what you're looking for, looking in the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, what are we looking for? John 10 and 10 says, the thief, there's the thief. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The abundant life, you know what I'm saying, is found in the will of God. The abundant life, I'm telling you. The abundant life is the only uh, the, the abundant life only comes from living a life that is that is in tune with God. Yeah. You gotta be in tune with it. To live a life in tune with God is to live a life of obedience yeah. to His yeah. word. And this His word calls calls and commands us to be witnesses for Him. Yeah. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power after that. Yeah. The Holy yeah. Ghost has come upon you. Yes, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and into all the yeah. and in Samaritan, and yeah. unto the othermost parts of the earth. Uh -huh. and even if it wasn't for the command or the promised reward, we ought to want to witness. The yes. yeah. rewards yeah. promised are part of the good stuff. Yeah. There are two levels of rewards promised. The rewards uh, here on this earth, the joy of seeing life change, the immediate fellowship and love shared by both the witness and the new believer, the knowledge that you have enlarged the kingdom of God, the fact that you have been used of God to save a soul from hell, the joy you have by seeing firsthand God's power to change life, uh, the rewards promised in heaven, the soul, the winner's crown. I got to give a crown, y'all. All right. 
I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on a crown. Yeah. Uh, the first fruit of their labor, Psalm 126, says, He that goes forth and yeah. weepers, bears precious seed, shall doubtless come again, but rejoicing, uh, bringing his shells with him. Yes. Uh, the promise of eternal fellowship. Uh, these wages surpass any uh, that we can gain here below. Uh, they are eternal. They are not something to taxes or market fluctuation. They are always sufficient. The greatest wages of all will be to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yes. However, if we are if we are being like most Christians today and failing in our daily witness. Uh, we will never hear those words. Uh, a sad accusation on our churches today. Uh, let's not fall in the category of ordinary. The only difference between ordinary and extraordinary is the little bit extra. Go get the school. The good stuff is on the second ship. Yeah. Uh, I can promise you, you'll be glad you did. Yeah. Amen. Church, I'm closing when I tell you. I'm closing when I tell you, church. Who will work in the harvest? We need to get more involved in the harvest than you are right now. Amen. The fields are white. The harvest time can't wait any longer and labor. I need it. Yeah. Church, I told you the harvest is ready now. The reapers are needed. Then I told you there are rewards for them. Where you gonna go? Come on. What you gonna do? Whose side are you on? The Lord needs somebody to go for him. Yeah, yeah. I heard Isaiah when he said, I understood what Isaiah was saying. That he heard the voice of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? He didn't just hear words spoken out of his mouth. Uh -huh. He heard the Lord and what he was saying. Uh -huh. I need you, Isaiah, not to pay attention to the masses around. I need you, Isaiah, you know what I'm saying, not to be afraid of the faces. Yeah. Right. I, I need you, Isaiah, not to be afraid, afraid of the danger yeah. that comes with this job. Yeah. I, I hear you. I, I, I hear you, Lord. Yeah. I hear you. When you say, I hear you, Lord, or when you find yourself being afraid of the dangers that come with the job. Yeah. Yeah. The reality of it is, is that somebody see a danger, you know what I'm saying, losing some friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My friend won't leave me because they're my friend. Yeah. So I can't lose the friend that I never had. Yeah. The danger, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not getting invited to some parties or some places. Can't miss party, you know what I'm saying, that I would never welcome in really anyway. Don't no invite me no more. That's another place God don't want me to go. It's a reality. The church has already heard the Lord say that we are the salt of the earth. That we are the light of this world. Church, he has already given us the commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Telling them to observe all things yeah. and whatsoever I command you. And lo, I wish you always, even unto the end of the world. Yeah. God children to die. Young, his families are being torn apart. Yeah. Uh huh. We need uh -huh. some more so yeah. some young strong legs yeah. to war with us. Yeah. If the old men have no one for counsel, who can the Lord send? When the old men are not able to go. Where will the help come from? And if the church, if the church don't stand, this world don't have a chance. So when you consider your mind, Lord, hear my send me. I'll tell the gospel story. I'll tell how when I was in trouble, 
the Lord and, and my sin was too heavy, too high for me. Yes. The Lord came mm -hmm. down from 42 generations. Yes. Yes. Step aboard and nine my train yes, sir. from glory. Stopped yes. off in a city called Bethlehem. Yes. I'm telling you, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time. Well, he was born of a bird of air. Yes. He wasn't born in a mansion, he wasn't born in a palace, but he was born in a state. Yes. But I'm so glad that he didn't count where he was born to be in a diaper against him. Yeah. He's not like some of us. He needs to have everything in place, everything all right to be who he, he is. But I'm so glad this morning that I've been married and I've discovered that I don't have to have everything in place. I don't have to have all I want, all I need. But all I need to know is that the Lord is pleased with my efforts. And it will keep me marching harder and harder. Because I woke up this morning, I'm holding in my right mind. But I can count it all to Jesus. Because, because I took all my troubles and placed them on his shoulder. On an old rugged cross, he marched up. God, God was here. When he made it to the hill, he was so amazed. He was so awesome. He began to pray for his accuser and his destroyer. What he did was, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Never mind how they talk about it. They said, oh, man, what he was getting it. Never mind how they stayed in my face. Never mind, never mind, never mind how they put the around my head. Never mind, Lord, how they feel me inside. Never mind, Lord, how they done all this to me. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They have to do it, Father. It's written in the Word. Never mind all this. That's the kind of God we serve. He keeps on looking beyond our faults and sin. So he died. But that's not how the story ends. So he died. They laid him in a bar with tombs because he wasn't going to stay there. He said, but three days and three nights he stayed in the grave. But earlier, earlier, son of home, he rolled the wrong top of heaven and earth in his hand. And I'm so glad that I can see him hot and lifted up and not on the cross, but sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. So when this life becomes confusing, I can look up to Jesus and he'll say, no, don't worry, I got you. And I'm sometimes this life is going to be real and rocking. And like the punk of man, but just hold on to my unchanging hands. I got you. My brother, just keep on rocking to the beat of the distant drummer. But when you can't hear me, just listen to the beat. When you can't hear me, just listen, just listen, just use your ears just and, and use your heart. Sometimes when these old ears don't hear right, you just trust your heart. Remember what you already know. I just keep on leaning. I keep on leaning on this everlasting arm. He walked with me. He talked with me. I know him to be a rock in a weary land. I know him to be a bridge over all my troubled mind. Because I had some troubles, y'all, but the Lord uh, took me over all that. So now, I'm free to tell the gospel story.